Change the a part of. All right, hello. Welcome to Writing One Day, where we talk about writing on one days. I forgot how to do this. <laughs> uh, today, we're talking about the biggest movie of all time right now. Across the Spider-Verse is what this one was called? Who knows? Spider-Verse 2. Spider-Verse 2. The second the two. Spidering. So, we're doing something a little new here. A little spicy. Yeah, a podcast about movies. A podcast about just one movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, And right. we just watched it. Mm-hmm. So it's fresh in Jason's mind because I already saw it two yeah, weeks ago. So it's rotten in his mind. I'm, yeah. But I'm I'm all fresh up here. When we left the theater, we, we just awkward silence, didn't talk about nothing in regards to the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was yeah, good. It was pretty good. Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I had no doubt it was going to be good. It was like exactly what I expected. Hmm. How much of it had you known about beforehand? Uh, like what was spoiled for you? Something, it, the the twist at, the, so there's spoilers for, we're talking full spoilers. It was spoiled. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it was spoiled for that. For Spider-Man 2. Yeah. For <laughs> Tobey Maguire. Spider-Man 2. It was spoiled to me the when he's like talking when he tells his mom about Sp- that he's Spider Man that that was not what it seemed. Okay, so but you like, didn't know what the twist was. No, but I I figured it out. Like when you were watching it or before you watching seen the movie? it, like yeah, yeah, like I knew that it wasn't like I knew that that scene existed, and I also knew that it wasn't what it seemed. I think that was the only thing I knew about it. I didn't know any story details. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, no story details at all. I think there's a bunch of clues, too. Yeah, so like you could easily yeah. pick up on it, but ha- things are happening so fast, and the and everything is so vividly colorful. You're trying, you don't, what, what are you going to try? What are you going to catch? Nothing. I love that. I um, love the animation so much. Yeah. Watching it a second time, there's little things that I caught that I didn't notice the first time. And like, I knew that like, the, the animation's so fast, and there's so many little like one frame things that are like changing so fast. Mm-hmm. That like, like the, I was like, like catching more little things, things around the the portals and like it would have like a sign coming from it like for a right. frame and a half or, or just whatever. like glitches and, and st- like when yeah. they're glitching. It is easily my number one like not my favorite animated movie necessarily. It might be that, but it's definitely the best animation of a movie that I've ever seen. Sure, bar yeah. none. I can understand that. Yeah, and I I heard it said somebody said that like the this one made it seem like they were holding back in the first one. I think that's the perfect way to describe it. So like the animation in this one was so good that even though the first one was incredible, it really does feel like it's not even close. Yeah, from the big from the get go. Yeah, the, that opening scene is my favorite. Yeah, scene seeing in the movie. like Miles in the windows while Gwen's thinking about him and stuff like that. Well, yeah, and it's like. She, like, opens the doors out into the street, and then the street becomes a subway as she's, like, pushing past people. And then, like, uh, somebody comes into the foreground, just like a random person, and all of a sudden she's in her, like, Spider-Gwen outfit. And then she walks past somebody else, and she's, like, dressed differently again. Yeah. Just so gorgeous, everything, and it moves so seamlessly from... Yeah, and then they do it again later with Miles, you know, when he's thinking about everything that's been going on. He's just, all the stuff following him is all just very cool, yeah. And all the different worlds and the different animation styles right from the get-go with the vulture. You're just like, oh, we're in for a fun. This is awesome. Yeah, you're, uh, you were sipping an espresso in a, a Leonardo da Vinci universe. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> they really do nail the essential Batman. Or Batman. Yeah, I really thought essential it was the Batman. best Batman movie I've ever seen. But the essential Spider-Man stuff, they nail really well. Just yeah. like the, the, the very talkative fights. Yes. You know, um, just the, the true, like, struggle between the two lives is, like, n- I've never seen it so well threaded throughout the movie than yeah. this with so with everybody. With everybody, yeah. yeah. And that, I think, is a big theme throughout the movie is just being, like, 
you can't have your cake and eat it too. Spider-Man can't do both. Right. And then that's there was a line that and I didn't notice the, the first Spider-Man time. Thing. The only line that I didn't notice the first time is when he's in, like in the very beginning of Miles' story in the movie when he's with his parents at, at that counselor or whatever. Um, he's like, like somebody says you can't have your cake and eat it too, and then he comes in the door and he goes, unless you bake two cakes. And then, and then there's a scene cakes. immediately next where he has to get two cakes delivered. Yeah. And that's the scene of him very much not doing both, like yeah. failing at bringing the cake, being late, trying to like be the superhero at the same time. Yeah, so. the literal saying is his dilemma that's yeah. a that was a fun, that's a fun choice to do yeah i thought yeah. that was really cool and i didn't i didn't put two and two together because i'm stupid the first time i watched i it, didn't think about it are you stupid too yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah once i heard that once i heard him say unless you bake two cakes i was like he's he about to have later. two cakes <laughs> and then i love when he opens the cakes uh, i'm not I'm proud, not proud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so simple yeah <laughs> there's so much so much of the story is grounded but then they don't they're okay with doing the comedy a little ungrounded, and that's fun too. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's crazy because like the like the Scarlet Spider steals the show really weirdly. He's the super moody one. Andy Samberg is that Andy Samberg? Yeah. Oh my god! I know that. Um, I don't know. I'm probably butchering that, but Yorma Tacone is also credited in the movie. Really? Yeah. I don't know who plays. he is, but I'm assuming that all three of them are the three Lonely Island guys are all playing different. Um, Spidey Spider Man. They yeah. had to to a million different Spider Men. Of course, you voice whoever, yeah, or huh. get whoever to voice them. But I did not realize that that was Andy Samberg. That's so funny. I knew he was in it, but I didn't know who who he played. Yeah, I just, I just clocked was, like, the voice random. and I was like, "Is that Andy?" And they only did the voice once at first. I was like, "That was weird." That's a throwaway little Andy <laughs> Samberg thing. And then when he's in the alleyway, and I'm like, "There's a throwaway Donald Glover." What do you think about yeah, that? Weird it. choice. Loved it. So bizarre. Yeah. Well, I liked it, but I felt the first time I watched it, it was like a little too much. It was like, okay, I get it. You're doing the, you're doing the bit. We get it. The Donald Glover being Spider Man and that stuff is really yeah. cool. But well, it's it's funny too because like they do like they'll show clips from other Spider Man movies that are canon and stuff like that, and yeah. and presumably even talk about like the MCU universe. They do, they and mentioned. perhaps even this is from that like in in the Spider Man MCU, technically speaking. Uh, Glover is the Prowler because yeah. he plays the character that later becomes the Prowler and he talks about having a nephew in the city and that's why he wants to keep it clean. Are you are you saying that he is is that the, the Donald Glover that we see in this movie is actually the same Donald Glover that we saw in the MCU Spider-Man? That's what you're saying? Well, they're playing the same character. Right. So like that could be possible. That could be possible. Interesting. You know? And, like, when they talk about Earth, whatever, and that Doctor Strange and his whole right. event, and you're like, they could be referring to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, uh, it, I don't know. All all the choices seemed, um, there's so many different choices, and some of them are random, but they seem deliberate, too. Like, it's just. Like what? Like the ones I just said. The, I wasn't listening. <laughs> the MCU ones. No. The oh, oh you specifically the about referencing other, other universes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, there's so many just fun ones too, like the cartoon, the super cartoon ones of like yeah, the like old the 60s comics one. when he's like, "Oh, I think I hurt myself," or whatever. Or, or the uh, the like Spider-Man PS1 or whatever that one is. Yeah. I don't know which game that's supposed to be from, but there's like very much like a polygon Spider-Man. He's like super short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That's good. There was something that I noticed this time that I laughed so hard at. Um, which is that <laughs> I, I really like paying attention to, like, all the little, like, brand names and things on, like, trucks and things. Yeah, it's, I've noticed that. Like, one of them is, like, it looks like a Coca-Cola logo, but it just says soda. But the tag, the tag for it is literally a generic, <laughs> like, a generic brand. I love that. Soda, a generic brand. <laughs> I laughed so hard. And then immediately after that, there's a ladder that on it just says ladders. <laughs> I was like, this is killing it for That's me. That's great. That's so funny what they're doing with these random Well, I things. loved, like, the other things that I was noticing was, like, you know, like, when you do the thwip. Yeah. I loved that the T-Rex Spider-Man was thwip. Yeah. Instead of thwip. Yeah. I, my, I, have, I had some theories going, not going in, but throughout the movie that I, I guess is wrong, but, like... I, at first, I was when we got introduced to Miguel. I was Miguel. I was like, I think he's going to be a villain or something like that. And he, and yeah, he, and he feels he kind of was. Um, yeah. So there's definitely on the second watch, I was like, wow, they they foreshadow him being the villain like eight times. They keep on being like, um, like the, as soon as Miles sees him, he's like, you're a good guy. Like you're one of the good guys. Yeah. You have claws. Are you even a Spider Man? Well, that when he said that, I was like, 
what if he's like a prowler? He like, like, like my theory when it happens, like what if he is like another Spider-Man arch nemesis, like what the dot is feeling right now, who's trying to just get rid of all Spider-Man and like make their lives miserable by being like, oh, I was a Spider-Man. Things didn't go well for me. So we have to keep this tragedy stuff happening. Like that was That's my interesting. theory. And it could still be true. There also is definitely a moment where he's got the vulture and then they show like just a silhouette of his face, like turning into like, the vampire, like a vampire him. claw, yeah. almost looks like a jaguar mouth or something. And then somebody like distracts him, and he like turns back real quick. Yeah. But it's like, oh yeah, he, he's set up to be a villain from the from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah, and, and it's not. It didn't feel like I wasn't supposed to figure that out though. Either. Exactly. So yeah. it didn't didn't feel like I outsmarted the movie or anything. No, and I think that that is good writing. Yeah, having stuff like that be in there, woven through the fabric of the movie, is little um, almost spoilers. Just being like, yeah, yeah, we're. It makes the whole movie feel more cohesive. It's like. It's not like they weren't planning it, but he was cool. Loved him. Yeah. Loved. Uh, is the is it the guy who put, from Get Out that's playing the British? I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah, go for it. Because I'm pretty sure you're right. That's who I heard. But I also didn't realize how much Jason Schwartzman sounded like Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya. Kaluuya? Yeah, I think. Or that's what I'm, But yeah, he was great. Yes, I, it's, so one of the things that I think is really cool is that they up the ante every time on the new characters, mm. is that you see, first of all, you get so much more of Gwen, and I love her. I think she's awesome. Oh, yeah. I love her story. I love her world. The, and we'll, we'll, at some point we'll talk about the animation of her world, because the art style of her world is my favorite thing in the whole movie. And it's trans colors the whole time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very the whole, It's very allegorically, the story is, and... Yeah, boy, Ted being able, the, the the scene of her being able to tell him, and then he still is like, I don't know if I can accept that, you know? Yeah. That's a heartbreaking scene. Yeah. And then when, like, later on in the movie, when he is like, yeah, I quit halfway through your speech, or whatever, like, the they're like, like even more so trans-colored, like, lighting almost. It's like trans-colored lighting for right, that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is very, very much... Like, they were very intended. Oh, yeah. And it's like uh, watercolors, too. Like it's, Yes. Yeah. It's like an Impressionist painting. Yeah. It's raining outside. She comes in, and then as soon as her dad, like, wakes up or whatever, and they start talking, the whole background starts to slowly drip like it's wet. Hmm. And it starts, like, kind of coming apart at the seams almost. It's You start to see it on, on the background, just, like, little drips of water, like, as if literally like tears or, or like it's raining or whatever. And then as the, it gets like more and more intense a little bit between her and her dad, like the colors or whatever, almost like shift, like things in the They're background start to maybe. like, yeah, they just like come apart and things start to get really chaotic. And it gets to the point where you like really can't tell what's going on in the background because it's just a mash of objects or whatever. Yeah, they don't, they're not in their surroundings anymore at a certain point. In that yep. Scene. And like everything is blurry yeah. and not just like with like a, blur over it but just like as if it was like streaking or whatever or something you know what I mean like somebody smudged the paper or something mm -hmm. and then as soon as she hugs him it all immediately goes whoosh, and immediately comes back to normal again and I love that this yeah. is one of the coolest things um, that is very cool. in terms of like animation choices it, it was awesome hmm. um, and that that is one of those things that puts it over the edge for like I think this might be my favorite animated movie now because yeah. it's just those the thought the that thought that they put into that. every little thing and and again I, I'll say this is what I was saying when I watched it the first time was I want to go back and watch that movie frame by frame like there's so much I feel like I missed just mm -hmm. from only having seen it once and now seeing it twice I still feel like I want to go yeah. back and I want to at least watch somebody on YouTube pick it apart frame by frame yeah, there you go <laughs> and, and then on two speed yeah I can watch it fast yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask who's your favorite of the newer characters that were people that weren't in the first one yes. Um, there's, re there's a bunch of really good ones, but probably the standout, I would assume for a lot of people, would be the Indian Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. I loved Indian well, Spider-Man. I don't remember his name. I couldn't pronounce it if I tried. But, uh, <laughs> just the, his intro and just everything, just like the... Yeah, this know, his attitude. So fun. He's like proud to, like proud not just in himself, but for, even the movie is proud of him being a Mary Sue. Yeah. He's like, but he's also like... That's right, it. he he's he's the Spider Man before tragedy. Is before struck. the tragedy, yes. You know, and I awesome. love that too. And I was—it's so funny because I, like, I hadn't—I wasn't totally thinking about it, but 
when his dad was in trouble or when her dad was in trouble, I was like, oh, shit, this is his tragedy moment. We've seen mm. him, we've seen this happen with a lot of Spider-Man where, like, and we saw it in uh, No Way Home where it was, like, they all gathered, or, like, the other Spider-Man from different universes gathered around, like, yeah, we all lose somebody at some point, you know? And yeah. it's like, are they going to have to do this for him? And then it survived, and I was like, whoa, I can't believe that happened. And then it turns out that's the whole plot. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the things that I... That's something that I have to let go because that I hate that. I hate the idea that like there's a there's one correct timeline and that by messing with the timeline, it's just going to like dissolve the fabric of the universe just because. I don't think that's true. What? I think that's a lie. Oh, maybe. I hope so. Yeah. And I think that that Miles is proving that that's not. And that's yeah. where he's like, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah, I think, but I think it could be a nefarious lie too. Like, I think he might be full villain even, like, and be lying about everything. Miguel. Yeah. And he literally says, he's like, I tried to break it once. Yeah. It's he's like, like, I did it once and it so didn't you don't work know out. That Therefore, that's what happened. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. I need to force my will upon every single Spider Man. Yeah. Which is a little much. And so, yeah, I think that we're going to have, we're going to find that that is bullshit. I hope so. Yeah. Like, if, if he's a, yeah, a villain yeah. in disguise or something. Uh, uh, who else was new British? The British guy, yeah. Spider-Punk. That we talked to. Yeah, he was great. Indian Spider-Man, as I was watching that, I was like, this guy's amazing. And then Spider-Punk shows up, and it's like, no, this guy's even cooler. Yeah, and he's like an intro, like they all, they all have really good points to the story. Yeah. The, the ones that are like that, you know, like they all have, re- like, I don't know, he was, he was a good... Spider-Man to come across. And that is what I didn't feel about some of the ones in the first movie. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. some of them were just superfluous. And yeah. like, I I get it. It's fun to have John Mulaney play Spider-Pig. That's yeah. funny. But I didn't want it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's just not, yeah. that's not that interesting to me. It's a little too far-fetched. Um, and not well, like he's a, back for the the team. Oh, in you know at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. So he'll be in the third one. I didn't care about like the noir Spider-Man too much yeah. either. Like, and they didn't really put any of them in this movie. Yeah, the only one that really had any Penny Parker was there for a second. Well, right. and Peter B. Parker was there for oh, a yeah. large Oh, yeah, and they portion. used him in a great amount. Yeah, and that's exactly what they said is, I've had exactly the right amount of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I was like, yeah, that's exactly correct. <laughs> yeah. I had exactly the right amount of you. That's funny. He's and, my favorite part of these movies, though. Mm. I, but I, not that I needed more of them. Yeah. That's that's the Jack Sparrow thing. I don't want a movie where Jack Sparrow's the main character. I yeah. don't want you like him guy. with Orlando Bloom hanging out and yeah, being the being the guy on the side. Yeah. yeah. And and so I love I just that voice is such a fun take on Spider Man. Yeah. yeah. It's great. And I know people exactly like that with their kids. Yeah. Like I think everybody does. Almost that. any new new parent. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> just him the way he endangers that child and <laughs> awesome is awesome yeah it's awesome <laughs> no i didn't because you asked me not to so i, I wouldn't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what'd you think about um the idea that every universe has exactly one spider-man and that they have to go through this like they all go through these same tropes or whatever because like the real reason that happens is because Stan Lee wrote the original Spider-Man, and then they've, everybody's done a new take on it, including Stan Lee probably doing yeah. new takes, where they want to hit the same beats so that way it feels like Spider-Man. And now that it's almost like kind of meta in a weird way where it's like, yeah. well, since an author wrote the same story so many different ways, what if all those stories interacted and they have to talk about the fact that an author wrote them all to do the same stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's meta in the sense of, like, can we start to write new Spider-Man stories? Like, it, That's interesting. You know, yeah. it's, it's it, Miles is going to try to break break that mold. Already has. And he already has. Exactly, and he's going to yeah. try to break it in an even bigger way where he's like, you know, you can't hold... You know, it's it, that is the fan base. Miguel is the fan base of, like, of a big thing. Being yes. like, no, it has to be this way. Luke can't do that. I yeah. know Luke better than the authors know Luke Skywalker. Exactly. You know? And that's what they're doing. And I think that's awesome. It is awesome. Um, and then and making the audience the villain is the play. Always That's great. all you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little weird that Sony is just like holding on tight to the rights to Spider-Man. I totally get it. But it's like, it is definitely like a weird thing that like all of the Marvel characters hang out over here, except Spider-Man's over here. And yeah. it's like, I'm so glad they did just for these For these alone. ones alone, yes. Like, the MCU, I do like. I, yeah. I'm glad the MCU exists. It's my, one of my favorite TV shows. It's a great TV show. Yeah. But 
having these other spider because like I didn't even know that they were gonna do more Spider Verse movies. I thought it was just one and done, and I didn't want it either. And now I'm so glad because because of course you because why why should we believe that was gonna be anything other than a money grab? You've given us no reason not to believe that, so of course I'm gonna be scared. And it's a miracle it didn't it didn't flop or it didn't become a terrible thing. I wonder how that happens. You know, like how do you get how do you get to a point where where you can make a really good, like, breakout success, like just totally unprecedented success, and then be able to get the same? I'm assuming the same writers to go in and do it again, and not have it feel like it's just totally a money grab. Because the writers, it just so happened this time, and sometimes some other times as well, the writers had more ideas. They just. And they loved it. They just wanted to do more. And clearly, even at the end of the first one, the end of the first scene, one ends with that scene of her being like, got some time? You know, so like they knew they wanted to do more. Hmm. Were they going to be able to? I don't know. Right. And then were they going to get messed with while doing it? Yeah. The studio it doesn't meddling. Doesn't feel like it. Didn't feel like it. No. So if there was, they fucking did great yeah. with that. I, um, I like that his friend is playing the, Sp- the Spider-Man PS4 game. I didn't know in the that. dorm. That's, That's cool. what he's playing when he's sitting there That's really in the funny. dorm playing. It's just footage of the Spider-Man <laughs> PS4 game. Not even like a animated, an animated version of yeah. it. It's literally just like screen cap of awesome. that game. It almost looks a little out of place. but Everything it's, is it's Spider-Man. Awesome. <laughs> Everything is Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the Prowler thing coming, but I did see it coming. The end. Twist. Yeah, oh. what do you mean by you didn't see it coming? At, at what point did you not see it coming? When he showed, when so when he sees the uncle, right? And then the uncle's like, come on, let's go. I'm like, oh, are they like, in this universe, are they like working together as like two prowlers or whatever? But I wasn't thinking about the fact that there is the other him would already still be in this universe. I was kind of thinking in the terms of like he replaced him or something. I was like, mm. is he going to be like, all right, put your prowler suit on. So I didn't see when he was coming, I was like, Who's this going to be? And I was like, oh, yeah, he'd still, the other version of him still would be here. Yeah. Fucking duh. That was just like an oversight on my head. Ed. But I was like, I bet like they're they're working together. So I kind of saw it coming. Yeah. But not the way they revealed it, which was so cool. I loved it. I do have one tiny gripe with it. And maybe I'm wrong now after hearing you say that. But at a certain point in that scene, it becomes so obvious. And then Miles goes... Who are you? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? I was like, I was like, it's so obvious at this point after, after his uncle Aaron is like, is like, oh no, I'm not the prowler. And then like throws the glove to this other kid that he's working with. And it's the voice. I mean, the voice is all modulated or whatever and stuff. Yeah. But I'm just at that point, I'm like, oh yeah, I saw their miles. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you I took your braids that. out. It's like, yeah, there's like tons of clues all over the place that like yeah. this another. And basically when he's in the apartment still and his uncle's about to walk through the door, they do this, like, big, like, crazy zoom up to the door as, like, somebody's unlocking it. Oh, my God, who's it going to be? Yeah. I thought it was going to be the other Miles. I thought that's just what they were going to do, is, like, Miles is sitting here, and then all of a sudden, Miles is going to walk through the door, and it's going to be like a, oh, whoa, whoa, what? Yeah. And so, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, we, there's another Miles. We got we to gotta see what he's going to, when they're going to meet, when that tension is going to happen. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, the now we're... He's like tied up and it's like, oh yeah, of course he knows that it's not the real Miles. He's not going to be tricked. Yeah. And also something I noticed this time is he's like, hey, uh, I saw we had like a security breach. Number six, that's the window, right? That was Miles sneaking in. Oh, that's why I think that Aaron like knows. shows up as soon as he like gets an alert or something like that maybe. Yeah. And at first I, I thought that he was just saying like, hey, that's the window, right? And Miles is like, yeah, yeah. And I thought that maybe he was like testing him to be like, is this the real Miles? I'll say some bogus stuff that doesn't make any sense. And if he says, yeah, then I know that he's hmm. just trying to BS me. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, we have three villains on the loose kind of right now for the next one. Yeah. That's interesting. And what did you think of Jason Schwartzman as Spot? He was great. I loved Spot him. was fantastic. And every, 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 all the way through. Yes. Cut all those Aries before I said all the way through. No. <laughs> um i loved fantastic. him and just him voicing that character was awesome but also the character itself was super cool yeah and i really like how he's like i'm your nemesis and it's like you're just a villain of the week and then he's like no now you've like egged me on i mm-hmm. am gonna go and 
And then he's like, oh no, but that is my nemesis. Yeah. Like, he didn't believe it at first. Which a lot of superheroes have done in the past. What? Like, underestimated. Oh, sure. And kind of belittled in a way. It is villain. interesting, though, when he's like, I created you by bringing the spider in. You created me by, like, kabooming the reactor or whatever yeah. it was and hitting him with a bagel. Yeah. But the, it's cool to that's me. A, that's a stretch, though. That that's, he hit him with the bagel? No, no, no. That's but a stretch that's that, like, that Miles is the one to be blamed for that machine exploding. That's fair. Not, not a stretch in the script writing. But a right. stretch as a human, like, yo, yeah, dude. as him saying it. But yeah. I, I like that he sees it that way, especially I, because he already saw it as I created you. So, of course, you right. get that parallel. I really like that um, the spot is at a certain point in the movie, like, becomes super powerful, like the elevated version of himself or whatever, and his colors invert. Like, one of his spots, like, oh, takes yeah. over his body in that animation. And it's like, he gets his, whenever he's, like, telling a backstory, it's, like, all black and white. It's, like, its own animation style. Mm, yeah. Um, and then when he does become like this, a scribbly like, style, like that purple yes. crayon book. Remember that? The kid, no. Little kid. I don't know that one. Little children's book about, like, someone writing with a purple crayon all through the book. Reminds me of that. Hmm. I'll have to read that one. Yeah, read that one. Get the audio book. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I when he becomes like his upgraded version or whatever, he like becomes all black with like a white spot on his face. But he's also like, it's like more chaotic. And Before then it was like spots, blotty and then be, after it's like actual yes. scribbles. Yes. And then the spots also like, not only are they just like a two dimensional like circle in space, but they also are like, have this like little like black like tendrils coming out of them almost mm -hmm. like a little like ink blots yeah um they're like scarier it's cool it's yeah. like oh wow he's like super he's powered now powerful. he's actually a real threat yeah um, but he's so, still like clumsy yes <laughs> you know what i mean awesome. i love it he's just an angry dude yeah but great villain for a change you know for as far as far as like a marvel villain goes yeah this guy his life was ruined but he's like i can't get a job my family won't even look at my face to give it credit though Spider-Man has always been good with villains. That's true. Yeah, Marvel MCU, in general, Raimi, great, but all of the Spider-Man Spider ones love been. the villains. Yeah, that's true. And even the comics, people would say Spider-Man villains are the way to go. Did you ever read any of the comics? Um, when I was really, really little, like, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I would, but like, I got them for Christmas in my stocking. I get my grandpa would give me one that's comic cool. every Christmas. That's cool. And it was like an, an Archie comic or a Spider-Man comic. You know, um, and I don't know like where it was in the story, so I wasn't a comic right. book reader. But yeah, I had one Spider-Man comic as a kid, and it was not from like the original run. It was from like this other. I think it was called the Amazing Spider-Man still, hmm. but it was like a totally different universe from the the regular one, and it had the coolest story. And I read it so many times. Um, and it was about this other guy who has, like, Spider-Man's powers named Ezekiel, who shows You've up. You've told me about this and, Yeah, he's, like, before. an older man, and he's, like, yeah, this is, like, an ancient thing. Like, every so often, like, somebody is chosen to be, like, the Spider-Power guy or whatever, something like that. Um, and he's, like, you're, like, the next one. He's, like, there's this ancient evil coming, and you are not going to be able to defeat it no matter what you do. And you got to get, we got to like seal you away. I built like this bunker and you got to like live down there for a year or whatever. And like at the end of the comic, Peter's like, I'm not going to do that. I'll face the the evil. And he's like, you're not going to be able to defeat him. And that's where the comic ends. And I never read the next one. I don't know what happens still. Wow. And I really want to go back and read it. But at the same time, if I'm going to go back and read a Spider-Man comic, I would like to just go read them all from the start. Yeah, which isn't you like know? almost possible to. It's impossible. Yeah, but that's the thing is, there's just so many stories that you don't have to read from the start because they don't yeah. all connect. Marvel came out with an app years ago mm -hmm. where they were like, "Hey, you can buy Marvel comics," and I was like, "That's such a cool idea! Imagine it!" Like, you know, maybe are they all digital comics? All digital. Oh yeah, but cool. like you get them in the app, and it's like, how cool would it be? Like ninety nine cents for a comic book, you know, a digital version of it, and just read through, or it's like a bit more expensive than that, ain't it? It's the same as a paper comic. It's like $12. Uh, and I was like, these have been out for 50 years. Yeah. Well, you, what, what are you doing with this? Like, I'm not going to buy a single one of these. No. That's stupid. If it was so cheap, that, that was what made iTunes good. That is what made iTunes a thing, is that people will, would rather pay 99 cents to use a nice interface than pirate. Like, that, that's how you beat piracy. That would be... A, 
rather than doing an MCU app or M or Marvel app, just comics in general, just if, if they were smart enough to do like digital comic app, you can just buy individual it's comics. It's a Kindle, right? Like I'm sure you can get graphic novels on a Kindle, right? Yeah, but like, I don't know if you can get like the, just the end of it, maybe like the, the big, whatever you call them, like the, the graphic novel companion, uh, the omnibus. one that, yeah, omnibus, like yeah. maybe you can get an omnibus of a bunch of them, which is probably the better way to get a comic in nowadays. Anyway. And I would love to do that. Yeah. You know, like that's fine too. I I think that if I could have like an easy access to, or even just getting reprints, I'd be fine. Like Omnibus or just like a, here's a box with a, a reprint of every comic in it or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. just so that way I can have the physical comic. Like what I'm not going to do is go try to collect the very expensive collector items no. so that way I can read it. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like the discussion around, like anytime people talk about like, people who are, like, really, like, true blue comic guys, and then they're, like, watching the movies and going, like, oh, it's I'm glad that they are reviving these characters or whatever and that they're now more mainstream, but it's unfortunate that people don't know the real source material, that they didn't, like, experience it the way I did. But it's, like, how? How am I going to do that? I would love to. Right. But it's just not, it's not, accessible. not feasible. It's, yeah. I could probably pirate PDFs of all of them. I'm sure that that's a thing. Oh, yeah. I don't like to pirate stuff, so I'm not going to do that. But I would totally pay... A couple cents here and there just to get like a few more pages of comic because it's so digestible and it's like my credit card's already in my phone charge me another 50 cents for the next couple pages sure i'll mm-hmm. do that you know because comics are just a few pages long right so it's like that's why it's like i can't spend that right i think comics are super cool but i just don't really have the opportunity to to consume the ones that i even want to yeah this is a bummer Bama. back to the across spider-man I, the first time I saw it, uh, one of the guys I saw it with is like a big comic guy, my buddy Jake. Shout outs to Jake. He was saying that that Miles is not just the anomaly and that he was like a second Spider-Man, but that he's the only Miles that isn't evil. Interesting. Which recontextualizes a lot of things when like Miguel or like um, Spider-Woman, the pregnant one, uh, where she's like, um, he's like, hi, I'm Miles or whatever. She's like, I know who you are. And then Miguel has like this mm. attitude towards him the whole time where he's like super mad at him. And it's like, imagine probably he's a villain, villain to a lot of Spider-Man. in every single other universe. Yeah. And then now he's like, I'm Spider-Man. Hmm. Like the, how that would rub everybody the wrong way. That would be much. what the third movie is going to be is him versus his reputation. Ooh, you know? I like that. That's a good trailer. That's a good promo line. Yeah. Also a generic brand. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I saw it the first time. I thought there was a lot that could be taken out and I still felt like it was too long because I've said it before and I'll say it again. No story needs more than 90 minutes to be told. Right. But the second time watching it, I was like, this movie flew by. And I realized that that was my take on Blackberry as well. When we saw Blackberry, when I saw it the first time, I was like, this is kind of slow. It's recontextualizing things too. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes when things are like, what is, what are we doing here? Can we move on to the thing I'm really excited for, or really focused on? And then the second time you watch, you go, oh, that's an important thing. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm more willing to sink, sink my teeth into it because I don't need to go, man, I hope the next part's good. I hope that this ends well. Yeah. You're not a, f- cause there's an anxiety from watching movies. I don't know about you, but yeah. like, because I don't know where we're going. It's, it's a long time investment to watch a movie. A, a time investment, and it's like I get taken to the movie. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm being taken away from, like, brought into a new world, and I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I'm going to have a bad time or whatever. Or if, and so I'm like, hope more the whole time, like, hoping it's going to be good. And when the movie's over, I'm like, oh, that was really good. Thank God. Now I'll watch it again and enjoy it. <laughs> and I think that's the same reason why it's so much easier to go back and watch a comfort show than it is to watch something new. Yeah, of course. You know, it's yeah. that. It's like immediately this has already be- become a comfort thing just because I have already seen it and I'm over that hurdle. Yeah. You know, back in the day, people would have killed to have another movie to watch. <laughs> it's like, we have two. It, okay, so if you were into movies back in the day and there were only two and they came out with a third, that's a big deal. Yeah. In the same way that now it's just split up into smaller things. It's like if you're a really big Spider-Man fan, every Spider-Man, Spider-Man movie is is equally exciting. Yeah. So I think it's something like that. Yeah. And it's like even if it isn't good, it's like I wanna, I'm want i going to see it because it's a new Spider-Man movie. Yeah. I did not see the Venom movies though, but apparently that like bodega owner lady is from the Venom movies. Oh. Because I looked it up afterwards. I was like. Who was? What was that? I don't then? know what that is, yeah. but it was funny. Yeah, 
But yeah. you're right. Who was that? And it's from the Venom movies. That's why. Because no one gives a shit. Nobody saw those. No one cares about Venom. No, I do not want about to see the character, them, no. but the, they're not good. Apparently, apparently not. But I, again, it's a Spider-Man thing. They just were so understated. Everybody said that they weren't any good. So I like didn't even know that they were in theaters when they were in theaters. And then now they're probably on streaming services somewhere that I could watch, and I just haven't even bothered. But at some point, I do want to go out just give it a shot just because I want to see more especially because it's kind of like that MCU thing it's like they're starting their own little Spider-Man universe it's like I want to be up to date on the whole TV show yeah yeah so I'm gonna watch the bad movies too I watch all the bad MCU movies yeah I don't anymore though unless I like I don't watch the shows I don't do it on purpose I I watch Loki but I don't watch the other shows like I didn't watch She-Hulk right and that's probably gonna be a big deal at some point maybe I'll watch it (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if I, if I end up watching a movie that she's in and falling in love with her story and her character and being like, I want more of her, I'll go back and watch it. That's fair. But, like... It wasn't a bad show, right? People just said it was rushed and that the animation was bad, right? Well, a woman was the main character. I'm not going to watch that. Yeah. Why didn't you say so? You should have led with that. There's a lot of controversy around that show, and I, and and half of it was yeah. not was not... Was like The Last Jedi, where, like, because it is a female... Like, it's just like that, that yeah. already like half of it's not, you can't take it seriously. So then you just start taking any of it seriously. You're just like, if I watch it, then I'll make my own opinion. But until then, I'm not thinking about it. Gwen is a girl and I wish she was the main character of the whole movie. Uh, yeah. When I first watched it, I really liked the Gwen story and I just wanted more of her story. Wanted all of that. I was like, that is so interesting with her. Like when she takes the mask off, I was like, oh man, no way. That's going to be like the whole movie now is about like her and her dad or whatever. And it's like, nope. And then she just leaves. She's like yeah. pieces out. And it's like, dang, that it's still a big part of the movie. Oh yeah. It's like a big, like emotional part that she like, as soon as she reveals her true identity, she just goes on the run for months. And that's an important detail to Miles' story. Because her saying, don't do it. Yeah. Don't tell your parents. You know, like, well, that's a really good reason. You know, if you're thinking about coming out of the closet and you have a friend that is like, I did it. And now I'm not living with my parents anymore. Yeah. (laughs) So maybe don't do it. Yeah. And then we see, like, basically he doesn't listen. And he does. And, and, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is, like. And because he now he's decided to not listen to anybody but himself. Sure. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm going to trust my instincts right yeah. now. Because I've learned. That's a good can't point. can't trust anybody yeah. else right now. Yeah. He also is mad at Gwen, Gwen for being the, like, on the same team as Miguel. When he's like, you you guys knew? Yeah. Her and Peter. But then Peter gets redeemed immediately in the, like, chase scene or whatever because he has that heart to heart with Miles. So it's like, now we see, like, okay, Peter is yeah, being like, oh, I actually kind of screwed up. And Peter's still, like, a role model. Like, Gwen is a peer. Yeah. And it's like, you should have told me. Yeah. You know? If anyone if anyone shouldn't be, like, being a parent about this, it should be you. you know, yeah, that, absolutely. For your own good bullshit. Come on. Yeah. That's a, good, that's a good movie. It is. Go see it if you haven't seen it, but I was the last one to see it, I'm pretty sure. You don't sure. have to see it. Don't listen to him. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, I guess. Yeah. Fuck me. There are no rules. Fuck me. You know what's interesting that I noticed this time around? And there's a line that mentions it. It's that um, Spider-Punk... Um, what's his name? He's got a weird name. Hobie. 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 So there's this kind of thing where they're like, is Ho- are Hobie and Gwen hooking yeah. up? Are they an item? I don't know. The whole movie, Gwen is wearing his shoes. Oh, yeah. Because he goes, are those my chucks? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? She is wearing a pair of green chucks the whole movie. They're definitely his. That's right. When he said, it's so it's maybe, very interesting. Maybe they are. But I do love Miles's, uh, Miles with the, the VR girl. Yeah. That was awesome. It's like, okay, we have someone else for Miles since I think it's pretty obvious that Gwen is not going to work out. Maybe it will in the end. But I think that yeah, I think that's them telling us it is not going to work out. I don't know if he'll hook up with the, the VR girl. The VR girl. Like... I guess like maybe not, but at least there's they're showing like that. He, I'm a big proponent of like you don't need all your characters to be in a relationship at the end of your movie. Oh, of course not. But since the two main characters of this movie, because it is like pretty much split down the middle, there's two main characters. This one's special. Definitely more Miles still because yeah. you get Gwen's story, and then it's like all Miles, and then it's like Gwen becomes a side character again after that. Yeah. But even so, even with all that said. She still is basically the main character, like one of the main characters, and they both have feelings for each other. So there is something to talk about there. But no, you're right. 
that yeah you don't need a romance in every story yeah. i'm okay with them not being not getting together yeah but i i feel like i don't if they if that happens i think that's going to be such the point that they're going to go their separate ways that i'm not we're not going to see them go their separate ways to two other people i think it'll be a mm-hmm. movie that ends with them going their separate ways gotcha at least that's how i would but maybe i'm totally wrong maybe they'll maybe in the next movie they'll both have they'll both be in a polycule that's probably it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> They tackled the trans thing in this one. Yeah. The next one, they're going to talk about polyamory. And they're yeah. all, it's actually all the spider All the spider In one giant relationship. Yes. 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 Yeah. That'd be awesome. Across the polyverse. Across the polyverse. Um, spidey, spidey amorous. Spidey amorous. I'm in a spidey amorous relationship. <laughs> I can date as many spiders as I want. Yeah, I can only date people in my web. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I can't wait for the next one if that's the case. That's great. In general, actually, though, the next one, I don't care how long it takes. Take however much time you need to make that movie and then give me the perfect movie. I feel that way almost always. Me too. About everything. But it feels like that's the... the, This one took a while to come out. It was like five years since the last one. I would love if they took five years to make the next one. Yeah. It's just as good, if not better. I have a feeling it'll be shorter than that, though. Because I have a feeling they they started to get it to make it kind of together too yeah, that's like a back true. to the future part one or two and three yep except they did it really well hopefully if they can land the ending as much as two and three are good they're not number one in the back, back to the, the future? future yeah but this is not about back to the future we can talk about back to it's, the future it's about back to the future verse we're gonna get all the marty's the one you can do that with game. everything i'm cool with it you could do that with everything, and I, I think just, it's fascinating how you many pitch versions the of Spider-Man there are. Oh, yeah, the Schwimmers. The that Schwimmer is a great verse. idea. It's the Schwimmerverse. It's all David Schwimmer. Every role he's ever played. Everything would be great. That's a good character. That's like a, or a good actor to do that bit with. If yeah. you're going to do a movie. Because it's so weird. Yeah, because everybody knows who he is. It feels... From one thing. It's the same Malkovich, the being yes, like John Malkovich. Exactly. Like, Schwimmerverse? Yeah. What? Schwimmerverse. <laughs> all of his roles? Yeah. Which one are those? <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder well, I mean, we all know them, but we can't name more than one role. Yeah, I wonder how many movies and TV shows and stuff that David Schwimmer's actually been in. Well, right. yeah, oh. thanks Thanks for coming along this spider ride with us. Yeah. This is, I'm glad we watched the movie tonight. Sorry there hasn't been an episode in a long time. We've been working. Yeah, we'll see you next year, though. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we'll see you next year. For sure. I definitely wanted to try out just a one movie podcast, a short one. Yeah. And I, it's been so long since the last one. Just fucking shit it out. Some, just shit, just shit it. some content out. <laughs> shit it out. <laughs> Full house verse. Yeah. The Jesse verse. Uncle Jesse verse. <laughs> Uncle Jesse verse. <laughs> that's funny. Why is that funny? Yeah, that's Good. the game. Like the that's best. The best verse. verse. Yeah. Swimmer I think it's still Uncle the Schwimmer verse. We talked about the, the cage, cage verse. verse. I think is a good one. It's it's got to be something that's just been in a lot of movies, right? So Samuel that's Jackson why, verse. Yeah, the Jackson verse. He's in everything. Yeah. Well, that's the same with Cage though. Like not yeah. not mainstream stuff all the time, but like he's just got so many fucking movies. Yeah. But it's also got to be someone that like I'd want to see in that role because like I don't I wouldn't want to see a Harrison Ford verse. Because I like I don't think he'd have fun making that movie. <laughs> I don't think Harrison Ford seems like somebody who never has fun making any movie. I know, so that's why like I don't I'm not captivated by him usually. He's got to like Indiana Jones. That's got to be the only role that he likes. He's like the new highest grossing actor again. Really? He just beat Sam Jackson. Weird. Yeah. Just because he's doing another Indiana Jones. I think so. They have to pay him to get him out. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. it really seems like he doesn't like making movies. Yeah. He's like, "Well, you gonna make movies? Yeah." He, like, he gives them a figure hoping they don't give it to him. Yeah. And like, here's the money. It's like, what? Oh, come on. I thought that was more than you. the world had. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I want a us. planet. And they're like, which one? Yeah. <laughs> Can't be Earth. Yeah. Like one of the other ones. <laughs> we got three available right now. Yeah. <laughs> trying to think um, of another good verse then. Because it could... It doesn't Keanu. Keanu. Keanu verse. He would do it too. Yes, he would. Yeah. The and you could get him from Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It wouldn't be the actor though. It would be their roles all coming together, which would be a totally like that's actually honestly even though it's goofy as hell, an interesting thing to write. But is also that, like, like Neo if, interacting with Keanu Reeves interacting with is he Bill or Ted? Ted. He's, yeah, Ted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz it would be a movie it would be a movie where like Keanu Reeves does something and then all of his characters start to come a lot to life. Yeah. 
and he's like, it's kind of like the Goosebumps movie where all the books start opening up. That's what I was going to say, is that so you'd have like a collection of everything that Keanu Reeves has ever been in. Yeah, the Keanu it, like, collection comes out, and he's going, it, it gets signing like toxic the collection. waste spilled on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it. Gets, it the, the collection gets bitten by a radioactive Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's like biting a DVD. <laughs> Oh, you see, this what this is what the writing one day can be about. It's like we're going to talk yes. a little bit about Spider Verse, and, and then, then we're going to make, make our, our own, own verse. verse. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch all Keanu Reeves movies now. We got Speed, yeah, Speed Two, The Rainer. Matrix Four. <laughs> oh yeah, but the John Wick movies, of course. Oh like yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen those, and that's like his most famous role now. Yeah, it's like his thing. Yeah, uh, Jack Ryan, he plays John Krasinski. <laughs> Those movies are the same thing for me. Jack Ryan and um, John Wick are the same movie. There's like 15 of them. Oh, Point Break. Have you seen Point Break? No. Point Break's a good movie. Is that I haven't seen it in a long time. It's He's a surfer, and he hangs out with a bunch of other surfers that are also bank robbers. Huh. And he like gets roped up into this like bank robbing thing. It's a cool movie. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, Keanu-verse. Like that might that be the one. one. I like that a lot. And if we write it? It's got to be a big, giant movie deal because we can't do it without Keanu. And if we got Keanu on board, that's real money there. That's real money. That's what we got to do. We just write things that are completely unrealistic for us to do. Then, then we'll make it. Then if, they, if, we, if somebody buys that script, it's got to have all these expensive actors in it, so we better get paid a lot of money too. Yeah. They find a way to, to not do it with Keanu. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Get the fuck out of John's house. Get out of here! I'm not going to do that to my phone. <laughs> Hi, it's John from Editing Land. What the, Today's question is, what actor would you like to see in a multiverse movie? Please comment below, otherwise Jason will hit me. Thank you. Careful not to hit the table, because it's going <laughs> Don't tell me what to do! Spit all the little. I'm gonna do another take on that. No, no, no. Keep it in. No. <laughs> I get to edit these. Uh, I had one. <coughs> Her Peter, maybe? And, uh, and uh, Lizard Boy? Or. Um, Her Papa being a cop? And, her dad, and his dad, dad being a cop? They both have cop dads. They can rub their cop penises all over each other. <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah. 